Nearly 20 years ago, Mar Terminals, New York's largest container shipping terminal, ordered 150 massive concrete platforms. 40 feet long, 10 feet wide, and weighing almost 20 tons each, the platforms became part of our national security efforts after 9-11 when they were used by U.S. Customs and Border Protection to examine each container arriving from overseas. Over time, advances in technology rendered the platforms obsolete, and for more than a decade, they sat unused at Mars' 500-plus acre facility in Port Elizabeth, New Jersey. Rather than being taken somewhere to be crushed and destroyed, which uses heavy equipment and creates hazardous dust and debris, Mar Terminals is instead repurposing them sustainably, which will have long-term positive impacts. Today, Mar has written a new and final chapter in the long life of those platforms. The story begins at the Port Elizabeth waterfront and literally ends, or should we say continues, nearly 70 miles south at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Most of us are familiar with natural reefs, which exist in oceans around the world. So why make an artificial reef? Simple. The creation of an artificial reef is really the creation of a nursery. A nursery designed to bring fish species and other aquatic life back to an area and to help rebirth many species that are struggling to find sheltered places to call home. Artificial reefs are constructed by intentionally placing dense materials such as old ships, barges, rail cars, concrete and steel piles, and huge rocks on the seafloor within designated reef sites. Since 1984, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection has overseen the creation of 17 reefs. The Bureau of Marine Fisheries, part of the Division of Fish and Wildlife, oversees reef construction and performs important biological monitoring over time. Mars concrete platforms have become the latest artificial reef which will live on for generations, promoting living marine resources which in turn supports revenue generating tourism and important recreational and commercial fisheries in New Jersey. As the reef matures, it will become home to as many as 150 marine, plant and animal species, ranging from lionfish and black sea bass to dogfish, tautog and summer flounder, and shellfish, including lobsters, crabs, and mussels. The project was accomplished through the coordination of specialized crane and barge equipment and an assortment of experts. Mars Management, the ILA, and the barge operator worked closely to devise a safe and efficient way to move the platforms from land to the barge and then from the barge into the water. In mid-October 2020, the first 74 platforms were carefully stacked aboard a specially equipped barge using a heavy-duty crane mounted to the vessel. The barge operator had to think two steps ahead, leaving room for a heavy-duty forklift to make the ocean trip and extra space to maneuver across the deck of the barge. The platforms remained in Port Elizabeth until the seas and winds promised several days of calm waters for the barge to make the 70-mile ocean journey and remain anchored for a full day. Then, in the rainy overnight hours in late October, a powerful tugboat headed out of the Elizabeth Channel, through the Newark Bay, under the Bayonne and Verrazano bridges, and transported the barge south along the New Jersey shoreline. By early morning, with the rain ending but heavy clouds remaining, the tug and barge arrived at the exact location specified by the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Bureau, roughly two miles off the Manasquan Inlet in 70 feet of Atlantic Ocean water. While a crane was used to load the platforms, unloading them took a different strategy. The barge operator designed and fabricated a unique ramp using two thick metal rails. The rails extended beyond the deck of the barge, ensuring the platforms wouldn't strike the barge as they fell. Once they confirmed the exact location, the barge dropped anchor and the forklift operator got to work. One by one, the forklift would pick up a 38,000 pound platform from the stack, carefully turn and drive to the stern of the barge. The forklift would stop in front of the metal guide rails, making certain the platform was perfectly centered. Then the fork was slowly tipped downward, resting the platform on the rails until the forks were no longer holding the platform at all. Most times, gravity would take over and the platform would slide down the rails and drop into the ocean. 
A few times, it took a little convincing to get the 19-ton platforms to take the plunge. It took around six hours to complete the deployment of the first 74 platforms. When they were done for the day, there was an intricate matrix of more than six dozen concrete condominiums ready for their new occupants. Only a few days after the deployment, specially equipped scuba divers visited the first half of the new reef and came back with remarkable video images. Already, there was plenty of curiosity as sea bass and dogfish inspected the newly created neighborhood. A few weeks later, the remaining 76 platforms were loaded onto the barge and deployed in the ocean, doubling the size of New Jersey's newest artificial reef, appropriately named the Mar Terminals Artificial Reef. As soon as the platforms begin hosting plants and other food sources, the reef will come to life with a wide array of creatures of the sea. Mar Terminals will be tracking the ongoing development of the reef in the years to come by again visiting it and filming the progress. But even sooner, the New Jersey diving community will begin making trips to the reef just two miles from shore, creating an easy to reach and exciting new destination for underwater exploration. So the final chapter for Mars Platforms is still being written. All of us must begin to think about our relationship to what we do with the environment. The simple idea of taking things that would have been discarded a generation ago and reusing them towards something beneficial that will be here for many generations is simply the way we must do things going forward. We understand this at Mar and have begun to rethink everything we do to help focus on long-term sustainability. As neighbors and people who live and work and raise families in this area, our terminal family is committed to the same goals. From the electrification of our ship-to-shore cranes and the reduction of diesel emissions and consumption, to the investments in energy conservation and renewable energy in our solar array, to the future of electric container handling equipment and continued reduction of greenhouse gases throughout our operations, this newly created artificial reef is another part of our commitment to leaving a better world for our children. Even more than our actions, it is the bringing together of our team to focus on these important aspects. Our sustainability team is made up of the diverse set of employees that is our company. Not just diverse in who they are, but what they do and their approach and outlook to the many things that Mar Terminals cultivates and believes in. This group effort dedicated to sustainability and greening all aspects of our operation has helped lead to not just the creation of the Mar Terminals Reef, but the creation of an effort and a movement that will make sure this is just one of many projects created to benefit future generations.